we're gonna go hit each one of these functions. So what I wanna do, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna spend a quick little um, review of all the functions that we've talked about so far in this course, and then add our last function that we will speak about. Okay, so we've, we've discovered, we worked about, yeah, 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 we've talked about a lot of different functions so far, and we're just gonna introduce one last. So to introduce my last one, I wanna make sure we have a good understanding of the other functions and how we relate it and how we use them. So you're gonna please uh, just kind of write these down and we'll talk about them real quick here. So the first one we had was our linear equation or the identity function. All right? Identity function had something of f of x equals x, right? I'm not going to have enough room. Then we talked about the quadratic function, which was f of x equals x squared. Maybe I'll try to do 4 on the bottom. OK. Um, mm. Then we also talked about a cubic function. Actually, I'll fit all four of them into there. So then we talked about a cubic function. And I'm sorry, I'm going to squeeze this one in here. Then we talked about an absolute value function, right? Yes? So therefore, those are like the kind of the first four functions we talked about. Then more explicitly in class, are you, then more explicitly in class, now what we went ahead and talked about was, we remember when the next thing we went over was the exponential function. <coughs> so this one took a form of f of x equals b raised to the, I'm sorry, x. Then we talked about the inverse of that function, which was the log function. And that one took the form of f of x equals log base b of x. Whew, there's a lot of these added in there, right? Then, huh? You don't remember any of this? We just talked about it. Go, I'll go through all everything you need to know about it in just a second. Um, then we also went through a brief introduction. We didn't go through a lot. of. We didn't really speak a lot with the graphs. We mostly just dealt with the algebraic parts. But then we also talked about our function um, f of x equals the square root of x. These are all just different functions, though, that we've talked about. Okay, And then I'm just going to leave the last one for our new one. Yeah. All right? So these have been all the functions that we've talked about. And with each function, what we've kind of dealt with or talked about is how we can transform the function, <coughs> right? How we can move it, shift it left or right, up or down, or anything like that, OK? Now, for the linear function, we didn't really deal with the transformations, but we mostly just kind of talked about an, an mx plus b form, right? Because we know the slope is going to how your m is going to change your slope, and b is going to change uh, your y-intercept, right? That's pretty much all we talked about with the linear equation. However, for quadratics, if we were given something in a standard form, we introduced ourselves to vertex form, which was like this. f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Then, if you're looking into, then if you're going to look into our cubic, we also talked about the cubic form. All right, so our standard form for this then we went into f of x absolute value. 
function. It was going to be a absolute value of x Jeez. minus h plus k. Right? And remember, that was how we shifted it. Remember, we talked about the shifts left, right, up, down, reflections. Okay? Then over here, we had b raised to the x minus h, I'm sorry, ab raised to the x minus h plus k. The transformations for this function are f of x equals log base b of x minus h <coughs> plus k. Transformations for this function are f of x equals a square root of x minus h plus k. Okay, So I wanted to go back through with these um, just for you guys to understand again so we can remember because all these functions and their transformations are related. All right, You guys can see all of these functions I rewrote, except for our linear, all these functions I wrote with an h and a k and an a. right? And they all have the same exact properties. Ken, you need to put that down. Okay. We all have the exact same properties. A was going to tell us if we reflected over the x-axis or not. right? It also told us if we're going to have a stretch or a compression. So you guys need to remember, if you forgot that, you might want to write that back down again. A tells us if we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis or a stretch or a compression. Remember quadratics? If it was you know, a whole number, it made it compressed. Or if it was a less than 1, it made it wider. right? That A tells you the stretch and the compression. It also tells you if there's a reflection over the x-axis. Then we went and talked about the h and the k. Remember, h shifts your graph left or right. And k shifts your graph up or down. Do you guys remember that? Yes? No? And notice, ladies and gentlemen, for each one of these formulas, it's always opposite of h. So you're always going in the opposite direction, right? Remember, it was always like x plus 2. That means you shifted 2 to the left. Yes? OK. So in, until we introduce my new, our new function, what I want to do is I just want to go back again and review domain and range with you real quick. All right. Because to introduce our function, it, domain and range are going to become very, 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 very important. So we want to make sure we know the domain and range for all these functions first. All right. So let's go and do domain and range. For the first function, remember domain, and, domain is the set of all input values that are going to be part of your function. So I look at this function and I say, is there any restriction on the number I can plug in for x to get an output? Can I plug in any number into this equation? Yeah. Any number. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. How about the range? If I plug in any number for x, can I get any number out for y? Is there any restriction on what number I can get out of my function? No. So my range is also going to be all real numbers. All right. Now let's go and look at the domain. I'm sorry, the quadratic. I look at my quadratic function. Can I plug in any number in for x squared? Yeah, absolutely. it doesn't matter how small it is or how large it is, how negative, whatever. You can plug in any number. So your domain, which I'll write in a different notation, is from negative infinity to infinity. Just writing it in a different notation. Still the same thing, all real numbers. However, no matter what number I plug in for x squared, is there a restriction on what value I'll get out of my function? Yes. Because is it possible for me to get a negative value in this graph? Right? No, you can't. You, you can plug in negative 1 million, and a negative 1 million times negative 1 million is still going to be a positive value, right? So my range has a restriction on it, which is the smallest value you can get is 0. You can't square a number and make it and have it be negative. So my range has a restriction of 0 and infinity. However, we look at our cubic. Can I plug in any number in for x? Can I plug any number in cubit? Yeah, stay. So my domain equals um, all real numbers, and my range equals all real numbers. Okay. The less noise you guys go ahead and make and put things away, the, the quicker everything will be able to go through. When I look at my absolute value, the domain is undefined, right? I'm sorry, not undefined, but it's all real numbers. The range, though, again, has a restriction like the quadratic. You can't take the absolute value of a number and make it negative. So the range. All right, is going to be from 0 to infinity. Let's just go through the rest of these really quickly. Here, you can see domain is, un, 
is uh, not restricted. And my range, though, again, is restricted from 0 to, um, 0 to infinity. Here, my domain is now restricted, right? I can't put a negative value. This, this value only goes down to the negative. So I cannot put a negative value. So my domain is now from 0 to infinity. And my range is all real numbers. Notice, if you guys remember when I introduced these, these are reciprocals of each other. right? These are reciprocal functions. Notice how the domain and range are kind of swapped. Reciprocals, remember, swap x, y. Domain, range, swapped. Hmm, interesting. Um, then over here, we can't take the square root of a negative number, right? You can't take the square root of a negative number, so my domain is restricted to negative numbers. So it's 0, pi. And the range, you can't take the square root of a number and make it and get negative, right? That was when we got i. So my range is restricted to 0 to infinity. All right? So what I'll do is I'll end it here. And next, when you guys come back, I'll introduce our next function and talk about it, OK? Don't walk in front.